Matt Lloyd is with us, Chief Investment Strategist at Advisors Asset Management. Thank you, Matt, for being with us. Your thoughts on the market here? Things. I think you, you always have to worry about the weather, the season, and the climate. And, you know, the weather is really what gyrates in the equity markets daily uh, and how we have changed those assumptions over time from five, six, seven cuts down to three cuts. And, oh, that's because the economy is growing. And that's the season aspect to it. The climate really is inflation. And so the one thing that it's not pricing in is a, a resurgence in inflation. And I think that many people have been stuck on the, the old parable about Goldilocks and the three bears. I actually think we should probably change it to the three little pigs to try to find out if this economy is based off, you know, straw, sticks or bricks. And so I think getting into the underlying health and stability of the economy in this expansion is probably the biggest concern I think that most people are not paying as much attention to, not, not only in an election year, but just in general coming from the times of the massive fiscal stimulus and monetary stimulus that we've had. Yeah, understood. I mean, if you were uh, on the Federal Open Market Committee, you know, we have March, May, June, July. What do you think um, you would be telling them? What would you advise at this point? I think they're really going back to history on this one, and, and rightfully so. They do not want to pull what Burns did, and that led to Volcker really micromanaging the rates to really shock the system. I think that's why they're being data dependent. And, you know, it's they're kind of like the weather to go back to that kind of narrative. If you don't like it, just wait and you'll have another Fed governor or president come out and say something different. So they're really trying to be a little bit more coy, be data dependent and not really shake up the market space as much as they want to, especially in a political year. But, you know, you're probably looking at maybe a contrite cut, you know, uh, in May. Um, but I do think that you're looking at the inflation side is really spooky in the sense that you look at wage inflation, you look at the uh, wages and prices from the last ISM number, you look at what's going on with goods inflation on that side. And then JP Morgan has a good indicator about inventories and commodities, and it doesn't get talked about a lot, but the inventories and overall commodities have been dropping. So there's a boost from that side of it as well. So I think if the economy is going to be growing, you have an inflationary issue. If the economy is contracting, then you don't have as much of an inflationary issue, although it'll still be elevated. But what you do have is the Fed having to cut for the many reasons they've had to cut in the past, which is for a recession that's coming on. Yeah. You know, as you talk about the inflationary environment and, you know, people are spending and their credit cards are booming and they are failing to pay to a certain extent. And actually, according to a new report by TransUnion, it found that credit card debt, the balance, is now more than $6,300. That is a record. Um, credit card debt overall, total credit card debt, $1.13 trillion in the latest quarter. Um, you know, there are people who, who don't seem to be worried about that, but it seems worrisome, doesn't it? It, it really does, especially when you look at the trend of it. You, you, when you look at charts, you always have to take context into it. And when was the trend? So we could talk about it going back to a certain period, these delinquency rates, and it was 2008, 2010. But really, when you look at the surge of it, that's the problem that comes on board. You look at the surveys that are out there. Um, and when you're talking about many people having all-time highs of multiple jobs out there to make ends meet, um, you listen to some of the comments from the CEOs like of McDonald's. Uh, talking about how people are struggling to pay uh, for their basic value meals versus Chipotle saying everything's fine. So maybe it's a bit Darwinistic in that, but you bring up a great point because it's not only the amount of delinquencies and the level of debt in there, it's really a measure of the amount of percentage rates that are out there that are all time highs from going back from about 30 plus years. So that is very problematic because that's going to keep draining, you know, some of this uh, lack of excess savings that are out there. And really wages and retail sales are not keeping up in general with the overall cost of things when you look at different like staple infl inflation versus discretionary inflation numbers. So it really is problematic. And that's where we go into this economy is probably not built on bricks right. to withstand some of this. It's more maybe the sticks and straw. Yeah, understood. Um, when you look at the outlook here, I mean, what would you advise folks when they when they want to invest in the market? Uh, what would you tell them? Maybe some safer bets? Do you, do you have a, a barbell approach, maybe something more risky and then something safer? How do you do it? Yeah, so we cover the, the, the gambit. But when you look at the, the level of concentration in the equities right now, 
And you see in the past that the inflection point comes, the capitulating moment comes, and you never can time it. But long term, when you dial up and dial down, we're a big fan of value right now. Uh, we really like predictable cash flows in that side on the equity side. Emerging markets look uh, appealing selectively on that side. Uh, we do think that having some dollar diversification could benefit uh, most investors. But we're really uh, a big on the credit side, uh, high grade credit, uh, looking at whether it's uh, yield in general, straight corporates, uh, municipals selectively. And we're breaking into three kind of tranches. You have your short term cash management. You have your moderate risk in the middle as far as duration and so forth. And then on the long end, you'll have some convexity, if you will, lower coupon that might take advantage of when some of the markets pull back and the Fed has to cut, that those things could have some total return potential in it. And so we're breaking into three tranches versus maybe a barbell. And that's really trying to hedge the yeah. really the many potential outcomes that could come out from this year. Yeah. Matt Lloyd, Advisors Asset Management. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks.